Hello and welcome back to Colonial Airstream, Millstone Township, New Jersey. Today we're going to do another Q&A session. These questions come from YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. We put them all together and we're going to go through them. First question comes from Instagram. That's Kathleen Bywater. She has a question about the propane valve in the front of an Airstream. She can't find an adapter. She's looking to put a barbecue grill or a fire pit. Well, there are adapters you could get aftermarket. It's more of like a plumbing type item that you could interrupt between the propane tank and the regulator. Now, it is dangerous to work with propane at high pressure. That's why Airstream gives you a low pressure adapter in the front of the trailer that's after the regulator you could literally plug in and put a low pressure grill in for your application I recommend the safest way to go would be to disconnect one of the propane tanks from the trailer and hook your barbecue or your grill pit directly to a propane bottle and it will just screw right in and that would most likely be the safest way to do it. If not, you could go to a home center and you could buy different fittings to get from the propane tank to one of your items and just be safe and you always want to consult with someone that specializes in that particular application before you go ahead and do that. Next question we have from Instagram as well is Bass Reeves. That says, hey Patrick, the protective windows on a flying cloud in the front, are those standard on all 30 foot models? I've seen some without. That is a very good question. Back in the day when you bought a brand new 30 FB front bedroom flying cloud with the bunk model, that model has a front queen bed with wardrobes on the side and does not have the panoramic window. So Airstream would put a rectangular rock guard in the front of the trailer and it would look different than other travel trailers that Airstream made that had the wraparound solar stone guards in the front. Because of uh, uniform, Airstream wanted to make all the trailers look the same in the front, and for protection of the curves uh, panels on the front of the trailer, Airstream then made the solar stone guard standard in years later. So that was about a few years ago. Uh, even though there's no glass behind them, it does protect the body and it gives it more of a uniform look so it looks like the rest of the Airstream travel trailer line. Next question comes from Rick on Facebook. Rick has a question. Given the challenge of space and weight on some of the single axle trailers, what do you consider a must-have spare parts to carry with you? Well, I always recommend bring a first aid kit. Always have that available. Then you want a good pair of work gloves, a basic mechanic tool kit. You don't need every tool under the sun, but screwdrivers, pliers, maybe a ratchet and a few sockets. Some spare fuses, the automotive ATC fuses would be helpful. And uh, you also, I carry in my Airstream ratchet straps. Just in case something came loose and unsecured, I always have that available just in case I need to strap something together. And then I always carry a deep socket for the lug nuts on the trailer. I don't have to worry about a jack because the tow vehicle I'm towing the trailer with has a bottle jack that we rated to lift that portion of the trailer up. Uh, so hopefully that short list of the items that I bring that wouldn't be too heavy would be helpful in deciding what to bring with you for tools on a single axle Airstream travel trailer. Next question is from JRL Valentine on Instagram. They want to know what is the ideal GVWR trailer per GVWR towing capacity? An example, a truck says it could tow 6,000 pounds. What would be the most desirable travel trailer? What would that be? Well, if a truck says it could tow 6,000, let's reword that a little bit. The manufacturer says it could tow a maximum of 6,000 pounds. Uh, the tow capacity is not an achievement, it's a maximum rating. So you always want to be below that. So if a vehicle has a maximum tow capacity of 6,000 pounds, I might want to look at a trailer that has a maximum weight of 5,000 or 5,500 pounds. So that would fall within any of the single axle trailers would be the best bet for you. So that could be a base camp 16 or 20, any of the Bambi 19, uh, 16 all the way up to 22, as well as the Caravel series. 
If you want to max the vehicle out but not overload the vehicle, then you could do a double axle 23 foot Flying Cloud International or Globe Trotter, which has a dry weight around 5,000 pounds and a maximum weight of 6,000 pounds. But once you get that trailer loaded, it's going to weigh between 55 and 5,700 pounds. So you're right close to the maximum tow capacity of that tow vehicle. The next question comes from Dustin Parker on Facebook. Dustin wants to know, is there a millennial setting on the battery? So Airstream travel trailers come with a battery monitor in the C-Level 2 monitoring system. And it will give you a rating based on percentage. That would be zero all the way up to 100. We always recommend that if you uh, have an AGM battery or lead acid battery, that you never drain them below 50%. So you look at the percentage and make sure you don't drop. But they want to know what is the relation of voltage versus percentage and how to get readings on that. Uh, it, the Airstream system doesn't go that in detail and if even if you get the solar charging system they put a Victron display in that still gives you percentage. I would recommend adding a Victron smart shunt. It's a battery shunt that goes between the battery and the negative of your whole battery system of the trailer. And that, you could open up your phone, open up the Victron Connect app, and then you could see the voltage that the battery has in relation to percentage of the battery. So that's what I would recommend if you want to get a more precise reading to know what the percentage means in relation to the voltage. They also want to know why the RV business has not started using bidets here in North America. Well, it's kind of a culture thing in the United States. Uh, bidets are not widely accepted, but they are overseas. But there are a lot of aftermarket bidets, like a tushy, that you could add to a toilet. And I've seen customers that have added one to their Airstream travel trailer toilets. And they easily disconnect the plumbing in the back, add the little T that the manufacturer gives you, and put the toilet seat on. Uh, so you could do this as an aftermarket retrofit. As a manufacturer standpoint, I'm not sure if mo a majority of the customers will see value in adding that to an Airstream. But in the aftermarket world, it should be an easy and adaptable upgrade for you. Dustin's last question is, what is your favorite dinosaur? Well, I do love turtles, and the Carbon Emmys is my favorite dinosaur slash turtle. It's a one-ton turtle that could eat crocodiles. I thought that was pretty cool, and uh, I appreciate you asking that. Next question comes in from Amy Greenwald Foley, and she wants to know, which hybrid e-vehicles have enough towing capacity for an Airstream? What should I know and ask for when buying a car with an Airstream in mind? Very good question. I went online and did some research of the hybrid or e-vehicles, e and uh, there's quite a few that could tow Airstreams. It's mostly going to be single axle trailers, but there are some that could tow some of the double axle 23s. Uh, the Land Rover Defender is one that could tow a maximum of 7,700 pounds. It, uh, it also has about a 750 pound hitch weight rating, which is, is pretty good and acceptable. The Lincoln Aviator could tow a maximum of 6,700 pounds. The Nissan Pathfinder Hybrid could tow 6,200 pounds. And then you have some of the Tesla models that could tow a maximum of 5,000 pounds. What you should ask for is hitch weight and payload. Those are two very important things. So Airstream publishes the hitch weight of their Airstream travel trailers. That's the dry hitch weight without anything inside your personal belongings and any factory options. And you want to always add about another 10% to that. And that might be close to what it would weigh when you're towing it. You have to compare that to the manufacturer's maximum hitch weight rating, and you do not want to go over that. Also, you want to ask, is that vehicle, is the hitch receiver, compatible with the weight distribution hitch? A lot of these vehicles are not. They're unipotty construction. They don't have the structure back there to support the hitch and a weight distribution kit to give you a higher hitch weight rating. 
and also then you have to factor in payload. So payload is the curb weight of the vehicle versus gross vehicle weight rating. The difference between the two is what you could put in the vehicle. That would be passengers, luggage, and the hitch weight of the trailer. So, and then you just basically want the factory tow package and you want a seven way wiring harness. That way you could use an electric brake controller, whether it's wireless or hardwired. Next question is from Marley Jones on Facebook. Marley wants to know what is the best way to secure my Airstream from being stolen? Well, I'm gonna give you two different ways to uh, go about this. You always wanna make sure your Airstream travel trailer door is locked, your storage compartments are locked, lock the windows, and make sure you close down the blinds and curtains when you're not by it. That way, if someone comes up to the trailer and they need to look inside of it, they can't physically see inside. They don't know what's going on inside. They don't know if someone's inside and maybe they're less likely to steal it. Now, there's ways to lock the trailer and there's ways to monitor the trailer. Colonial Airstream is a wear safe dealer and installer. So we can install a GPS system that's hardwired into your trailer that tracks movement. So when you're not by the trailer, it will tell you if it's moved. So you'll get an alert on your phone and then you could alert the authorities and at least know what's going on and track it to hopefully find out where it went. Now, if you want to prevent it from moving, there is hitch locks you can get. There's standard hitch locks that we carry at our dealership. There's also the Alter Lock, which I'm a big fan of. I have one on my Airstream travel trailer. Proven Industries also has a very secure lock. And then you could do wheel locks. It's kind of like the boot. In the city, if you park your car in the wrong spot and you get a ticket, they'll boot it, they'll tow it, and it's very hard to get those boots off. And uh, no, no one's going to be real, able to tow the trailer with a boot on. Hopefully these suggestions will help you and give you some peace of mind in storing your trailer and preventing it from being stolen. Next question is from one of our fans on YouTube, Rebecca Hanneran. Rebecca wants to know, why does Airstream keep putting Blu-ray DVD players inside travel trailers rather than smart TV and Apple TV? That is an excellent question. I ask that myself that all the time. But I know from working with Airstreams, selling Airstreams for the last 20 years, we have a wide age group of customers that we sell Airstream travel trailers to. And they want to make sure they can support a wide range of customers. We, when I first started selling Airstreams 20 years ago, we had tape decks in the trailers to support our customer base when the industry had moved to CD players. We had CD changers in the trailers when the industry moved over to Bluetooth. So Airstream is making sure that they satisfy a lot of different people. But I think it's time that the Blu-ray players go away. Hopefully in the next couple model years, we'll see the transition over to smart TVs and easier access to put in devices like an Apple TV inside the travel trailer. If you decided that's something you want to do, it's a very easy installation and a lot of our customers do that on the aftermarket. Next question comes from one of our fans on YouTube, Steve Muse, wants to know, with Airstream level, what is the distance from the ground to the top of the trailer hitch ball? Is it the same on all Airstreams? It is different on all Airstreams. Base camps and classics have different hitch ball heights than say a Flying Cloud International or Globetrotter. But generally, the mo most popular hitch ball height is 17 and three quarter. That is uh, published on the Airstream window sticker and in the publications as a recommended hitch ball height. Uh, so that will cover the most majority of the Airstream travel trailers made. Next question from YouTube, it's John Mayer. John wants to know if I could touch base with management at Airstream to make an Airstream truck camper. Wow, that's, a, that's an awesome idea. I know Avion had truck campers back in the day and they were highly desirable and people retrofit the inside and modernize them. I think that would be something that I would enjoy. But that is a great idea. Uh, the design is there. They got the front cap. They could build the side sheets. Uh, I just don't know if Airstream did a study on it to see if there's a market for that type of product. And um, I'm sure if they know people will buy it, they'll come up with a way to make it. And Airstream is looking to expand their product line in the future years to a wide variety of different Airstreams that are going to be made. And maybe that's something that's uh, they're planning. But uh, I can imagine getting a Ford F-350 dually diesel truck and putting a high quality truck camper on the back. 
and going overlanding, taking it up to Alaska, bring it down the Baja. And then when the tow vehicle gets uh, 200,000 miles on, you could take it to truck camper off, put it on a new vehicle. Gives you a lot of flexibility, maybe even a flatbed style truck camper. That way you could buy a cutaway cabin chassis and put one on the back. So uh, I'm excited if they ever came out with something like that. Next question from Marion Ladd. Williams on YouTube, are there official Airstream modification accessories? Or are the ones I've seen on YouTube, Airstream groups, good quality? Uh, examples like the step race and the door lock latch. Well, Airstream does have its Airstream Supply Company, and there's a lot of accessories that Airstream sells on their website. So those would be things that they might recommend. Uh, two of the things you mentioned are done by an Airstream owner that has a serious passion for the Airstream product line and the Airstream family and came up with devices to help make people's lives a little bit easier. And they're, they're brilliant. The step race uh, allows you to position the aluminum bifold entry step in a, in a position where it doesn't bounce, it doesn't have the flex in the bottom. And the, the door lock latch is something that prevents the door from accidentally locking. If you slam the door and you and the lock mechanism is not fully engaged, it'll prevent it from engaging. So there's, there's always going to be a lot of really cool devices and products that are available aftermarket. Uh, but as for the official Airstream, I would go to the airstreamsupplycompany.com and just click through and look at what they have available for sale there. And those would be things that Airstream would recommend or at least stands behind. Another question on YouTube came to us from John Davis. John wants to uh, give tips and tricks for finding a high quality local service for Colonial Airstream buyers. So we sell the customers that live all over the country and uh, we love to have them back here for service. We're a five rivet dealer, uh, but that's not always possible. They're out traveling and they rely on the dealership network. Airstream has a large dealership network throughout the country. And all the dealers have a very high standard of Airstream's expectation for service. The dealers that reach the highest would be five rivet dealers. And you can look up on the dealer locator on Airstream's website for the five rivet dealers in your area. And I recommend maybe starting off there or starting off with the closest dealer if you have a challenge and you need help right away. I would also always recommend any of our customers to call our dealership first. Maybe we could give some guidance over the telephone through our service department to help you out, maybe save your trip to a dealer. This next question came through on our TikTok from Shirley6982. Wants to know what trailer has the most available options? Well, the Flying Cloud has the most available options. If you go through a list of options, it would definitely be a Flying Cloud. Either be it a 25 front bedroom or 27 front bedroom. Now keep in mind, the International and Globetrotter have features that are available on a Flying Cloud as standard equipment. But if you order a 25 front bedroom flying cloud, you could order the solar charging system. That's 290 watt panels with AGM batteries. You could order a full window owning package all the way around the travel trailer. You could decide whether you want a gas oven or a convection microwave. You could get it the standard way with one air conditioner or the most popular way, which would be with two air conditioners. They would both have heat pumps as well. You could get a rear entry hatch. On that model, you could get a desk in place of the lounge, and you could also get a front overhead bunk in the front of the trailer over to twin or queen beds. So that would be the model or the model line that would have the most available options. And we did a video on that exact model that you could click and check out all the available options. Next question came from our TikTok is Jojo Lowrider. And Jojo backed into a low branch and dented his trailer. Can it be repaired? Yes, it can be repaired. We do all body work here at our dealership, Colonial Airstream, Millstone Township, New Jersey. The back cap is repairable. Uh, there's multiple segments back there. There's a total of three in the top, and you got three in the bottom, and then you got two mid pieces. Those could all be repaired. The process is, we drill out all the rivets, cut the seams, we replace it with a segment, cut it in place, and seam tape it and rivet it back in place. There's a lot of human hours in one segment repair, so the cost can be great, but 
most RV owners will have RV insurance, whether Progressive, Geico, or other leading RV insurance providers, and they cover it. You just pay your deductible and you're on your way. Next question came from our TikTok from Wheelie Master MTB. And Wheelie Master wants to know, they were at a festival and they seen a Stella Toir branded Airstream. And what are the, some of the other unique travel trailers that they've come across over the years? Well, there's a lot of really cool DIY and companies that make trailers for mobile use and for business use. We've uh, seen here at our dealership the JetBlue Airstream. So it's an Airstream classic motorhome that they put airplane windows on the side and uh, they used to visit college campuses and promote spring break trips. Uh, and the kids would go inside and they'd sign up for vacations. Uh, here in New Jersey, in Jersey City, at the Hamilton Inn, they have an Airstream trailer set up there as a bar outside. And down in Long Beach Island, New Jersey, there's a very popular spot called The Local that also has an Airstream outside. It's got the hatch and they serve food out of it. And there's been numerous amount of different Airstreams over the years that come through our dealership that I've seen online. Disney World has a whole bunch that they use and uh, they're great other platforms, not only for the look and the, to, to attract people to come to it, but for the application, it's a very solid structure to put your store inside. Bear Goods uh, down in Texas, they have a leather store that they travel and they visit different events and they sell their products outside of it. So you're gonna see more and more as the years come. They're very, very popular. Next question comes from TikTok and it's Seth Goldberg wants to know, Hi Patrick, we just bought an Airstream. How do we go about joining a club or attending an event? Congratulations on your purchase. Welcome to the Airstream community. The WBCCI, that's WBCCI.org, is the Airstream Club. I recommend visiting the website and finding out what your local club is. Our local club is the Wachong unit here in New Jersey. We also have the New Jersey unit. Locally too, we have the DC unit, but there's lots of different Airstream clubs and communities and they do rallies, they do luncheons, they do get togethers, and it's really fun. There are other industry related clubs that you could research online and join, but I don't think they're gonna be as active as the Airstream club. So I recommend starting there. Well, I hope you enjoyed the Q&A session here at Colonial Airstream. If you have a question, you could always write to us or you could comment on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, or YouTube. We'll collect all of them and we'll use them on the next episode. Well, this is Patrick with Colonial Airstream. Call us at 800-265-9019. You can visit us on the web at colonialairstream.com and we'll see you soon.